Chapter 4 Captured By high noon, Atiyah had reached the Wadi El Jamar, where a seasonal stream had cut a path through sandstone, a crevasse deep enough to paint a zigzag of shadow. Atiyah jumped from his camel into its shade, whipped off his head cloth, shook his hair into a black bush around his head, and took a deep breath of the cool air. Then he hobbled his mount, saying soothing words to it as he crawled beneath its legs. Forgive this indignity, beautiful camel. I'm tying your feet. You're wandering to... to... Atiyah pressed the back of his hand against the camel's neck and sank to its knees. Trammel, trammel. Atiyah savored the rhyme. He began to sing again, stroking the camel's neck as it closed its heavy-lidded eyes. Drink quietly of traveling, beautiful camel. Hobbled your legs, you're wandering to trammel. Brilliant idea, he added. He stood and stretched his arms to the side, fists clenched. He danced in a tight circle, dipping and turning like a falcon at the top of its climb, humming, his eyes closed. He felt sun and shade flicker on his face as he turned, and the next verse came to him. Shade giving wadi, shelter our flight, deep desert cove of blah 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 light, lavender light, cool pearly light, deep desert cove of cool pearly light. The camel wove its head back and forth, eyes shut, nostrils distended. Atia stretched out his back on the soft sand at the bottom of the wadi, wiggled to make himself comfortable and closed his eyes. He woke, feeling thuds through the sand. Horses! In one silent motion, he rolled over and stood. The crevasse was all shadow now. He stuck his head up. Two men were approaching on horseback. Narrowing his eyes to make them out, Atiyah recognized distant cousins who now followed Saladin. He remembered them as boys. Hassan and Ahmed, were they? Always together slow in speech. They had grown very large. Atiyah stopped squinting and waved his head cloth. My kinsmen, he called to them cheerfully. Welcome, Hassan Ahmed. The sight of you lights my evening. Have you come to accompany me on a raid to help me increase the glory and wealth of the Bini Khalid? A thousand moons have waxed and waned since we last rode together, cousins. Your company will be welcome. The two large cousins looked at Atiyah their mouths hanging open. May Allah bless, Hassan began. Health to the brave, Ahmed muttered simultaneously. The brothers exchanged a scowl. Hassan made a cutting motion with his hand to silence Ahmed. Saladin wants to see you and tells you to tell us, I, I mean tell us to tell you. He says stop your raid and come greet him in the tent of, uh, you know, the brother Asafa, he said, all in a rush, then cleared his throat, <clears> spat, <throat> and looked triumphantly at his brother. Right. He said to grab you fast, added Ahmed. Clever Saladin, thought Atiya, to give such dolts employment and to catch me in a web of family obligation. To allow Hassan and Ahmed their triumph, he pretended disappointment. Come, cousins. Sighing deeply, he turned to unstrap a packet of figs from his saddlebag. We will eat together in the shade in the wadi granted us. Dutiful kinsmen that we are, we will forgo our raid. I will ride back to camp with you, my lance untouched, my arrows unfletched, without a single camel, mare, stallion, goat, or chicken captured. Since our Uncle Saladin wishes it so. As the three of them rode back toward Asafa's camp, Atiyah's spirits rose higher and higher. Adventure lay ahead and sparring with Saladin, and he would soon see Halima. He heard the welcoming cries of the children, and from the corner of his eyes he saw Halima hurry with her mother to the tent opening, where poles swooped back the tent flaps to form a shady breezeway. As soon as he found her, Atiyah looked straight ahead, his heart racing, his knees turned to water, pretending not to notice her presence. 
Hassan and Ahmed delivered Atiyah directly to the greeting tent and stood, bowing to Saladin, gr grins of self-congratulation bobbing toward the carpet. Twice welcome, and may Allah keep you, my nephew Atiyah. How grateful I am that you have called off your way to honor your old kinsman. Saladin came forward toward Atiyah, his arms outstretched. Atiyah, suddenly wishing he were back in the desert alone, sank to his knees in front of his uncle and touched the man's soft hand to his forehead and chin. Saladin settled on a cushion. Atiyah squatted, balanced on bare feet, rocking slightly. Over coffee and pounded dates, Saladin filled the air with compliments. Atiyah returned them, truthlessly, heedless as a goat herd swatting flies. My excellent nephew, what will you do with your life? The question caught Atiyah off guard and he froze. The future is one with the past and is in the hand of Allah, he answered cautiously. Each of us has a part in shaping the future, Saladin pressed on. The future is built of our efforts. What will your part be, Atiyah? To give himself time to think, Atiyah settled cross-legged on the carpet. Uncle, I will accept any task that Allah puts before me. I will work hard to bring more glory and livestock to the Bini Khalid. I will strive to be brave and generous and to walk in the footsteps of my uncle Isafa. You would be a desert sheik like Isafa. He made a desert sheik sound like a dung beetle. Atiyah could find no answer. Here in the desert, Saladin continued, the Bini Khalid are, are but one tribe, and a divided one at that, always in strife against others like yourselves. Perhaps, Atiyah, the task Allah has planned for you reaches beyond these confines. The dismissal in Saladin's voice made Atiyah's head spin with anger and blurred his thoughts. Come with me, Saladin urged. Come with me and make your contribution be the glory of Islam and peace among the tribes. Atia felt the hair rise on his scalp. Follow Sidi Saladin to cursed Fez or Marrakesh? Send me to a war, uncle, as long as I don't have to ride beside a Shumari. But don't take me to the city. Saladin leaned forward, waiting for an answer. You, you are of the city, uncle, Atia said carefully. You know the ways of scholars and teachers. I am of the desert, and its ways are my ways. It is through the desert that the will of Allah is made known to me. Ah, Atiyah, his uncle exclaimed and smiled on him so dotingly that Atia squirmed. You are truly a gift of God, an angel among us. You are youth and hope. You are a man of the desert who wishes to follow in the footsteps of Isafa, and yet you are wise. Your mind is supple and can grasp the wisdom of the ulama, the religious council, and make it understandable to Isafa's people. A terrible suspicion dawned on Atiyah. What is it that you wish me to do, Uncle Saladin? Saladin joined the tips of his fingers and leaned toward Atiyah, looking into his eyes and yet seeming to see beyond him. I wish you to come with me to Fez, to meet his magnificence, the Caliph, and to study the Quayo. Uh, ooh, hmm, hang on. Karoyin? I should have looked that one up ahead of time, y'all. Uh, the greatest university of Islam. Study, read books, listen to clerics explain the world. Sweat broke out on Atiyah's soul. Saladin continued, I have no doubt that in time, oh, this is Saladin's right. I have no doubt that in time you will be chosen Sheikh of the Bini Khalid. When that time comes, you must know the ways of the ulama. You must be equipped to lead all our tribesmen, the city dwellers, as well as those who live under the black tents. Atia clutched at a faint hope. What if Isafa requires me to stay in the desert with him? 
Vin, my nephew, the Bini Khalid will continue to pull against itself like a snake with two heads. Brother would lift his hand against brother, tribe against tribe. As Saladin spoke on and on, Atiyah felt that the, he was already in some city, as if walls of unforgiving stone were closing tight around him. I will put the decision before my foster father, he said, when he could stand no more of Saladin's persuasions. He bowed out of the guest tent. May fleas devour you slowly, he said once outside. May Allah scatter scorpions in your path.